So sometimes what I'll do to check the video, and I, I've just noticed this. I don't even notice it, but I'm sure you guys have noticed it. This has nothing to do with the sermon or anything. This has to do with just the irritation of me. Uh, I wobble back and forth constantly, don't I? Yes. I'm always up here going like this, and I don't know why. I don't even know that I do it, but I, I have no idea why this is happening. So um, the it's the Holy Ghost, brother. Amen. There's the love of the church. Amen. Right there. But I am. I'm always just rocking back and forth. I have no idea why I do this. I think it is just all the children I've had and this the constant rocking that I've needed to do. I was rocking before I had children? Maybe because I'm a child. Amen. All right. So uh, we don't need to read the account that Saifu just read. Today is Palm Sunday. It's the first uh, Sunday in this holy week. So I'm going to preach on the Palm Sunday account. But I want to get us all on the same page. So some of these questions, I think you know, because we've talked about it before. And so you're going to be able to do this. A few Palm Sunday wise. We are talking about Jesus riding into Jerusalem, uh, the Jewish pilgrims waving palm branches in the air, uh, the Jewish pilgrims praising Jesus. So I want to answer a few Palm Sunday wise. So why did they call him son of David? That's, that's the first why. Why did these Jewish pilgrims that were thronging into Jerusalem for the Passover call him Son of David? What was the reason? What is Son of David? Do you remember? Okay, very good, Brother Farber. And that's on video. Farber was the one human that answered. Amen. All right. And it wasn't Mary. It was Scott. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. 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 I don't, I don't know what got into me today. Ah. Uh, so first, son of David is a title. King David was the greatest king of Israel. And God promised King David that from him would come the anointed one of God, the Savior, the Messiah. And son of David was a Jewish title for that anointed one. So the fact that these Jewish pilgrims called Jesus son of David, they were acknowledging that they believed that Jesus was the promised anointed one of God. It's an important title. So that's why son of David. Why the palm branches? Do we remember? Victory. That's right, Grambo. Victory. Palm branches was military victory. Both the Romans understood it and the Jews understood it. That to wave a palm branch was military victory. So son of David, waving a palm branch, the Jewish pilgrims were saying, you, anointed one, are going to come and give us victory. Why Hosanna? Amen. There comes Mary. Uh, save us. Hosanna is a transliteration, not a translation. So a translation is like, um, the, the, we say dog. In Spanish, it would be perro. All right? That's a translation. Perro is dog. They're the same thing. A transliteration is taking our letters from the Roman alphabet, placing it on the Hebrew word to vocalize the Hebrew word. That's a transliteration. A very popular one is, do you want to know what the word hallelujah is in Spanish? Hallelujah. Do you want to know what it is in Hindi? Hallelujah. Do you know what the word hallelujah is in every language on earth? Hallelujah. That's a transliteration. They'll just take their, their letters to formulate the vocalization of that word. Hosanna is a transliteration. It's the Hebrew word Hoshiana, save us, we pray. So, Hosanna, they're waving palm branches in the air, and they're saying, save us, son of David. All right. Next, why a donkey? Why a donkey? Well, it is a prophecy. Jim read it. Zechariah, Matthew quotes it. The prophet says, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. So this was to fulfill prophecy. So to sum up the meaning of Palm Sunday, it's simply this. Jesus triumphantly enters Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy from Zechariah. The pilgrims call out to him, son of David, signifying they believe him to be God's promised anointed one and the true king of Israel. 
They shout out Hosanna as a word of praise, but really meaning save us. And they wave palm branches in the air, understanding the symbol of victory given by the Messiah. All right. That's Palm Sunday. But did Je well, let's ask a couple questions. Did Jesus save them, yes or no? Did he save them the way they had in their mind? No. No. Which is why some of these Jewish pilgrims on Friday will be the ones in the crowd yelling, crucify him. Because it wasn't what they expected. But that's what Palm Sunday means. Now, as a preacher and as a Christian, I want you, uh, let's take Jesus. Obviously, we need to imitate the Christ, but let's take him out of this equation. With the actors and the players left in Palm Sunday, who do you think I'd want you to imitate? Do you, the, the religious leaders that told Jesus to rebuke his disciples, do we want to imitate the religious leaders? Yes or no? No. What about the disciples? I mean, they're all going to abandon Jesus. They didn't even understand what's going on. So do you think I want you to imitate them? No. What about these Jewish pilgrims? I mean, they said all the right things. He, he is the son of David. He is going to bring them victory. But they meant it in all the wrong ways. So I don't want you to imitate them. So what actor in this story is left? I said take out Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The donkey. We got one guy left. Well, actually, it's a her in Zechariah. We have, we have one player in this story, and it's the donkey. If I was to title this sermon, I would simply title it, Be the Donkey. And you want to know why? Because what did the donkey do on Palm Sunday? Her job, which was, what was her job? To carry Jesus to a needful world. Who paid attention to the donkey? Nobody. And the donkey, I don't think, was thinking about herself. Everybody else in the story, in seminary, I was taught a lesson. It's a great lesson. I still remember it. The homiletics professor, homiletics is just preaching homily. So the, the homiletics professor said, you know that your sermon is terrible if you are the hero of the sermon. How many speakers will tell a, a story and they make themselves look like, wow, what a great Christian this person is? You know that your sermon is terrible if your hearer leaves thinking about you. So he made a very important lesson. Never make yourself the hero of the message. Who needs to be the hero of every single sermon? Jesus. That's why my advice to us all is, be a donkey. All the donkey did was carry in Jesus. Everybody else in the story, their hearts and their minds were on themselves. The Jewish pilgrims, they didn't really want Jesus. They wanted what they thought Jesus was going to bring them. We know that because when Jesus did not bring them what they wanted, they killed him. So the Jewish pilgrims, even though they're saying, Hosanna, son of David, who are they thinking about? Themselves. The religious leaders, who were they thinking about? Themselves. The disciples are about to argue who's the greatest in Jesus' kingdom. Who are they worried about? And you know what? I hate to say it, people, if we're honest with ourselves. You wouldn't say you're in church. You know the answer. But if we're honest, in your own heart and mind, way too often we're the hero of our story. We're the hero. Look at what I've endured. Look at the hardships I've had to overcome. Look at the amazing things I've accomplished. For far too many of us, we are the hero of the story. The donkey. Everybody else wants to steal the show from Jesus except the donkey. Beloved, too often we want to be so important, but when it comes to Jesus, please hear me. Jesus is the hero of your story. 
Jesus is the hero of your story. I didn't know this about donkeys. What I'm about to show you is true, and I had no idea. 46 years on this earth, and I had no idea. But a couple weeks ago, an acquaintance of mine told me something about a donkey. And at first, I mean, I didn't doubt it, but I said, I'm going to look into this because that doesn't even sound right. So I looked into it. And what they told me was absolutely right. Donkeys are unique in a very special way. From a bird's eye view of a donkey, do you want to know what the bird sees? No, Mary, I already know you know. <laughs> what the bird sees is a cross. I didn't know, no, Heather, I did not know that. I did not know that. I mean, the stuffed animals. How much time do you think I'm spending on stuffed Let's you and I have a discussion about this, all right? I... This is a good way not to make myself the hero. No one believes. Thank you, Chuck. Me and Chuck in the same category. I am definitely not the hero of this story. Ah, uh, all right. <laughs> no, I had no idea about this as a donkey. The donkey has a cross on his back. Now, Darwinian evolutionists will give make up some googly gawk as to why that is the way that it is. But I honestly and authentically believe that is a witness. There is a cross on the back of a donkey because all the donkey is known. Who had ridden this donkey before Jesus? Nobody. The donkey, his witness was to carry Jesus, to carry the cross to a hurting world so that Jesus would save the world. Beloved, be a donkey. <clears throat> I want to tell two stories. Both true. Both of the same nation. Listen, we, we've gone through a pretty rough year. Wouldn't you agree? A um, lot of death, a lot of anger, a lot of hate, a lot of people at each other's throats. But we also live in a very different country where when there's a pandemic, when things get locked down, uh, there is a humongous social safety net. Uh, looking around the room, chances are a lot of us have gotten that stimulus check, not once, not twice, but three times. Well, most of the world doesn't live in a place where they're just going to print money and give it to you. Most of the world, when they get locked down, it causes far more duress than you and I could even fathom. If you've known me for a while, then you know that I have a heart for India. I've been to the nation of India five times. Been all over the nation uh, in video projects. And India has some of the richest people on the earth. But that is 0.1% of Indians. Everybody else is in abject poverty. Now, most Indians, the great majority of Indians, make the equivalent of one American dollar a day. That's $7 a week. That's $28 a month. That's their income. No matter how many kids they have, no matter how big their family is, a dollar a day. Now, I want you to imagine that that's your income, and you have to feed your family on a dollar a day. And then the global pandemic hits. Everything gets shut down. Even public transit shuts down in an instant. How long from you not making a dollar a day until your family begins to starve? Not very long at all. And they don't get stimulus checks. So when they shut down the nation, and this is why, this is why it's silly when you watch the news and you say, more Americans in the United States have died than any other nation. Well, this is just abjectly untrue. On a good day in India, on a good day, two out of every five Indian deaths get a death certificate. That's when everything's working well. Two out of five. That means three Indians that die every day, it's never recorded anywhere that they're dead. 
Now add a global pandemic and a lockdown. The death toll in India is catastrophic. Catastrophic. From every possible reason and source. It's catastrophic. There is death everywhere. Um, one place that didn't shut down is Mission India. Mission India is an organization that I trust. Not part of the synod, but an organization that I trust that spreads the gospel. And they asked themselves the question, in the middle of this pandemic, how can we bring Jesus to the villages in India that are uh, untouched? So they put together medical kits, food baskets, and gospel information, and they sent people on foot because public transit was closed. And people on foot would hump this stuff deep into the villages in India. These are two such individuals right here in the forefront. When they got to this village, the families of the villagers were down to a meal a day. Many of them were starving. When these workers arrived in the midst of the pandemic, and not only a pandemic, not only a lockdown, they also had a cyclone come through. And when they visited, they said, why? Why are you people... You're not charging us anything. You're not asking for anything. Why are you bringing this medicine and this food and this information about a God that loves us? And do you want to know what their answer was? Because Jesus loves you. Because Jesus loves you. These men have left that village, but do you want to know what stayed in that village? Or who stayed? Jesus. They started a church in that village, and the village now has turned to Jesus Christ. These two guys are phenomenal donkeys. They made it their business. They made it their business, no matter what, what was put in their way, to bring this village Jesus. This next picture is an even more amazing story. Mission India went into this remote village. The situation in this village was so dire that the whole village was on the brink of starvation. And then came Mission India with food, with medicine, and with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this was in a very radical Hindu part of India. Uh, you probably don't know Indians' politics, but there is two major parties. One of them is called the Bhartiya Janata Party, radical Hinduist party, and they allow, they don't do it, but they allow the burning down of Christian villages, the torture of Christians. Christian persecution is great in India. Well, this was a BJP village. And Mission India went into the village in order to bring the medicine and food and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The BJP official was so overjoyed that someone cared enough that he opened up the BJP office and turned it into a church. And now that radical Hindu village knows Jesus. What does it mean to be a donkey? It means this. You, you care so little about you and so much about Jesus that you're willing to do whatever it takes to bring Jesus to people. Then when you leave, they don't remember you. They remember Jesus. And it's Jesus that remains there. Nobody cares about the donkey on Palm Sunday, but the donkey was the only one that God prophesied about. Beloved, don't get it twisted. Jesus is the hero of your story. Jesus is the hero of my story. We mess this up all the time. It's so nice, isn't it, to feel so important to somebody that they couldn't live without you. Till you're dead. 
And then those people are devastated because they were under the faulty impression that they couldn't live without you. If this world has taught us anything, it has taught us this. Death is around every single corner. All that happened last year was we came up with one more way for you to die. In a world that was surrounded by ways for you to die. It doesn't make me happy, but it's true, isn't it? Live your life in such a way that everybody that you love can live without you because you're not the hero. Jesus is the hero of your story. And your family and your friends and your neighbors had better understand that you could disappear in an instant. And if they were depending solely on you, you have made yourself an idol in their lives. You are like the pilgrims on Palm Sunday. As long as Jesus does what I want him to do, praise you. Jesus is the hero. If I'm such a bad pastor that this church would fail without me, that's a failure of me. This church is not about me. This church is not about Saifu. This church is not about Jim. This, although we would not have as good a chicken without Saifu. Uh, but <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, but the point is very simple. Who is life all about? Jesus. Live your life as a donkey. And remember, all you're doing is carrying Christ because he's the one that died for you. He's the one that rose again for you. He's the one that's coming back for you. He is the only one that matters. Amen? Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Father, we thank you. You are a good, a holy, an awesome, and a gracious God. Lord, truth of the matter is we are way too important in our own eyes. Empty us from self-pride and help us remember that we're really just carrying you to a hurting world. In the name of Jesus, amen.